Um, I'm Louise Prophet. I'm the matron um, on the neonatal unit and also a trustee of the charity. My role is basically to manage the nursing establishment within the neonatal unit. But also it's very much to maintain standards of nursing care for the families and the babies. People can ask us, you know, why the NHS isn't funding all the things that we need. And I guess without the charity we'd have a, quite a basic neonatal unit. It would still be here, it would be functioning and the staff wouldn't be any different. But with the technologies we're able to use, with the support of the charity, it means that we can just develop that five-star service that we wouldn't otherwise be able to deliver. And every newborn baby deserves to have that. I was just, I was holding on to the pain. I was believing, oh no, my baby's gonna stay some more in my tummy so that she can grow properly and not have to go, to go through the stress. But God said, no, it's time for her to come. I didn't have a choice. Say hello. I, I wasn't expecting it at all. I'm happy at least. I can see her. And I believe she's going to survive and be a strong woman. <laughs> They're really nice here and good. I, I have confidence in them because God is using them for, for a lot of things that miracles. Well, I'm biased because I love it. I just describe it as a very family-centered department who really care about our babies and their families. Are you happy with her sort of up on your chest up here, is that all right? Yeah. We work very closely with the medical and staff. We, we all know each other very, very well. I have 92 nurses and there is another 30 odd medical staff. We, we can't work alone, we have to work together, we rely on each other and it makes it a really close, lovely environment to work really. I think because we work alongside the parents and the families so closely, we sort of support each other and that sounds funny because nursing isn't seen, seen in that role, but we are very much supportive of each other. He's now on his eighth week. Uh, he's been in the high dependency for the past two, two weeks today, I think it is. Sorry, it's a bit, it's a bit of a blur. It is very hard when you go out to the outside world and you see other mothers that have had a normal pregnancy and they can push their child around in their push chairs and you feel a little bit sort of left out. But you, you know that he's in the best place that he could possibly be. And then hopefully he, uh, he should be out in time for Christmas. <laughs> he agrees. <laughs> we know when the families are down. We pick up when they're having their darkest days. So we will have to go that extra mile for them. They can also pick up when we're very busy, when things aren't going well. They'll suddenly bring us in cakes. They'll make us coffee. So it is, there is a mutual respect there from the families as well as the, as the nurses, which is lovely. Good afternoon, Oliver Fisher Neonatal Unit. How can I help you? It's a regional neonatal unit, which means that we provide intensive care for babies within Kent, Surrey and Sussex and further afield if there is a requirement. As a centre of excellence, we're benchmarked, so our outcomes are very good in comparison to other units of a similar size within the country. We're very proud of this. With the recent CQC visit, our department was recognised as outstanding. We're very, very delighted with that. In the world of medicine, nothing really lasts longer than seven to ten years. We moved to this new unit 14 years ago now, so things are out of date. 
The high dependency nursery um, is in desperate need of upgrading. This is incredibly expensive. We're talking about half a million pounds to completely gut the room and to bring it up to a spec that's um, appropriate for, for today's technologies, really. And we rely very heavily on the charity to help us to support these projects. And the equipment that we use is incredibly expensive and we have to use a lot of it. It's just one incubator, um, costs £17,000, but we have 36 incubators, all of which need replacing every 10 years. And that's just one of the most basic pieces of equipment. There are the monitors, the pumps, and loads of other things that we need to be constantly making sure are up to date and able to fulfil the care that we expect for our babies. The Oliver Fisher Charity, of which I'm a trustee, is just vital. The NHS is quite slow in um, processes and very often we'll see things that we want to introduce within the department and we can go to the charity and we can discuss it with the trustees and we make an informed decision about whether or not we can buy those pieces of equipment and they have been absolutely paramount in us being able to react instantly rather than wait for the next year or the next round of equipment bids. So it's hard to know how we would manage without the charity. We're very, very lucky. And when the parents uh, have had babies with us, they will go on to then fundraise, they involve their families, their friends, their local communities, um, and people just don't cease to amaze me how much they really get behind us. Yeah. Now we're here to hand over a cheque for a fundraising activity that we did, uh, Lisa, Claire and, and myself, um, in September, and it was a two hour fun day where we raised just over £1,400. Thank you so much, that's an amazing amount to raise, £1,400 in two hours! <laughs> it's amazing! It's really important that people raise money for these kind of things because even if you use the unit or you don't, you normally know someone that has and you know it's always good to raise money for a local charity. And they are fantastic and we cannot do without them and it's incredibly humbling to see what people do. We have got some people that do huge amounts of fundraising who unfortunately didn't get to take their babies home. Babies that have been with us for a very long time and we build up very close relationships with them and if unfortunately their babies don't survive they're still incredibly grateful about the time that they've had with their, their babies and their children. They have an openness to us so they want to carry on the work so that other families in the same situation can benefit from the care that we were able to provide for their, their, their child and their family because it's never just a baby, there's always a mum, dad, siblings, grandparents, friends, so it has a much wider impact. That's deeply touching and moving when that happens and sometimes it's hard to understand um, because you feel that we've, in a way, we've let them down. But obviously we haven't because we can't change everything in the world. And if you can just do your very best for their babies while they're alive and while they're here, then that can have a profound effect on their families forever. So it's really important. We try and get the staff involved more and more so that they can really understand the impact that the charity has within the department. Yeah. But the younger nurses have been really amazing in, in doing things like Zumbathons and two of the nurses did the Sahara Trek. Um, some of the consultants have done various runs. We've done a 10k and a 5k run to raise money. And it's always very entertaining to see the doctors doing runs. Um, and that helps to galvanise the junior members of staff to be involved. So yeah, there is, there is a staff, quite a large staff involvement now, which is great. It makes us feel like we can do anything, anything at all. Nothing is a problem. It's a nice place to be.